Welcome back, dear listeners. It's time once again to put aside all you think you know, all you believe to be true. Time to open your mind to the strange, bizarre, and sometimes terrifying world that exists in the shadows and fringes of our own, where myth, legend, and rumor are made real. Yes, it's time for more thrilling tales from the West Virginia Hills. Tonight's episode, Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods, is brought to you by Sugar Bombs. The breakfast cereal with explosive great taste and 100% of the recommended daily allowance of sugar. Get your morning started right with Sugar Bomb. Our tale begins on a fateful night when a young pioneer scout, Red Fisher, finds himself in quite the predicament, having taken a spill and fallen into a dark place. Where am I? Jack? Bib? Mr. Bailey? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Who's there? I I can't see you. Me? My name's Sally. What's yours? Fred. Are you okay, Fred? I think so. My head's a little woozy. Must have hit it when I fell. Oh, no. Did you get lost, too? Well, sort of. What I mean is that I was camping with my scout troop by the lake near Flatwoods. There were these lights kind of dancing in the sky. Neat. I guess. Anyway, we heard some weird noises, and the guy's double dog dared me to go look. So I did. All by yourself? You're really brave. Shucks. Thanks. I followed the noises to an entrance of an old mine. It smelled awful there, like rotten eggs, but worse. Suddenly, there was this bright light shining down on me. I was super scared and ran to the mine to hide, but everything felt strange. Like, my feet weren't even touching the ground. Everything went black, and I woke up here in the dark. That'll happen to me, too. We'll just do what my dad says. When you stray to lost your foot, do it best and stay put. They said they'd bring you soon. There are other people here? A very good question indeed. Tune in next time to find out the answer in the chilling conclusion of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. to the responders for their outpost here, and uh, you're welcome. The responders are on a true mission, you see, helping folks through thick and thin till the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened, I figured like most, it was time. This was the end, but, but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake, that we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrong. Didn't give enough to charity, maybe. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to be thought. So I asked, and how? Why? I fought your wars on Earth. I'm ready to fight them up there by your side. Then, in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind a dumpster. You ought to cook that first, I warned them. Seemed obvious. We tried, but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, Fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. Until then, let's share a home-cooked meal together, all right?
bring you the final chapter of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. In the last episode, pioneer scout Fred Fisher met a curious girl named Sally while hiding in the dark. But as it turned out, they weren't alone. There are other people here? Yeah, they probably just went to get more food. They'll be back soon enough. You can wait with me, and they'll give you food too. You just have to do what they want. What do you mean? When they want to play games with you. Games? What kind of games? I'm still learning the rules. Mostly, they're kind of boring and only hurt when they use the needles. Needles? Yeah, you know, like at the doctor. This doesn't sound like any game I know. It sounds downright awful and these people sound really bad. We have to get out of here. No, no, stay put, stay put, stay put, stay put. Okay, okay, stop screaming. Sally, whom he swears he met. So I leave it to you to decide, dear listeners. Was this simply the wild imagination of a frightened boy lost in the woods? Or was Fred Fisher, in fact, abducted by brainwashing aliens from outer space? Be sure to tune in next week for another thrilling chapter of Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Overseers, let's call these personal journals. Not an official log, just something for me. The Agricultural Center, one of my first posts with Vault Tech. I was so excited because I used to come to this same...
south of Vault 76. I, I knew this wasn't going to be the Appalachia I remembered, but... Mutated an... Interview 2, Reverend Delbert Winters. Hi, I met you in the woods near the Morgantown Airport. You were picking flowers. Why? Uh, I was, uh, harvesting a lot of stuff, actually. I, I hunted deer recently. Looked strange, but tasted fine. Hmm, okay. Well, what's a basic easy meal that someone who's been surviving on cans could make? Uh, you can make tea with dried flowers. It's not much, but it can suit your stomach. I don't know what this flower is called, but I, I call it a soup flower. <laughs> if you added water, you can make a tea. Same with rabbit meat or chicken meat. You can easily make soups with boiled water. God willing, we can adapt them. This is my first interview with another survivor, Kesha McDermott. She found me trying to break into a Nuka-Cola machine and um, showed me a different way. So, Kesha, can you tell us a bit about how we can make sure our water is safe for drinking? I'll try to keep it to the basics for training purposes. Oh, it's not complicated, really. Find water and strain out any big particles and chunks. Then, boil it in a pot over an open fire for a minute or two, then let it cool. Should be fine. Like, <laughs> like making tea, right? <laughs> uh-huh. You joined the responders a while ago and helped develop a program to train volunteers. So, uh, were you a survivalist prior to all of this? <laughs> you could say that. I taught high school kids. I used to talk about this very thing to them. Practical application of the sciences. It's fascinating, but you never realize how important some things will be down the road, do you? I guess not. So if we were students of yours, what would you tell us about the world now? How can we survive? That's a good question, Dasa. Well, I can tell you all The first thing you need to do is get yourself some clean drinking water. It's likely all you'll find is dirty water, but that's okay. We can fix it. Dirty water carries a small chance of disease, and it's a bit radioactive. You'll probably survive if you drink it, but you shouldn't take that risk. It's better than toxic water or nuclear waste, though, which are both very harmful and should be boiled thoroughly first. Got that, Dutha? Yes, um, contaminated water should be boiled. Okay, that sounds easy enough. So, boiled water is safe? It's mostly safe, but still a bit radioactive. What you really want is purified water. Oh, purified water. Okay, how do I get that? You can build machines that will do it for you, and that's the most reliable way. Building them requires some space and time and plenty of materials. But... On my way up here from Watoga, I found pure occasionally in the If I boil water and that's mostly safe, aside from a teensy bit of radiation, what about tea? Most folks around here are Responders are on a true mission, you see. 
Helping folks through thick and thin. Till the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened, I figured like most it was time. This was the end. But, but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake. That we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrong. Didn't give enough to charity, maybe. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to been thought. So I asked him. I asked how? Why? I fought your wars on Earth. I'm ready to fight them up there by your side. Then in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind a dumpster. You ought to cook that first, I warned them. Seemed obvious. We tried but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. But until then, let's share a home-cooked meal together, all right? Charleston originally, so it was easy to join up. What wasn't easy was the work. Rebuilding Appalachia from the rubble while survivors flock to us regularly from all over. So many have come and gone. Their stories untold. Their names. I've decided to ask people to record their thoughts, their stories, anything they want to preserve forever. I'll call this series The Survivor Stories. I'll start with me. I was an anthropology PhD student at Vault Tech University, final year. I was printing my thesis when I heard the sirens. I thought for sure my father, a Vault Tech employee, could take us all with him, but uh, only two reservations came through. I refused to go with my little brother. He went to the vault. They could not persuade me, though they tried. In the end, I pushed them inside it, and that was it. After that, I, I went back home to Charleston and, well, survived. Eventually, the responders formed, and I, I signed up right away. It was so hard. The flood devastating. Relocating to Morgantown Airport and now Flatwoods has been... I, I remain optimistic. Been with them now for, uh, oh, I guess two years. We have big plans. We can do so much to help. Maybe, just maybe, we can rebuild enough to be okay. And in the meantime, I will continue to record stories of survivors when I can. We are your history. This is Dasa Ben Ami, signing off for now.
Citizen, the responders be are here alarmed. to help. The responders are here to help.
Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I'm home. I'm sorry it's been so long, but I... I couldn't get away. I know neither of you is around to hear this, but I miss you. I miss watching Dad grade papers on the living room table. I miss the three of us <coughs> around the room, listening to the silver shroud. Dad. You were right about what living underground would really be like. 25 years locked in with the same people was a challenge. But watching them pair up, get married, have children, well, I think I got to know a little bit of what you and Mom were always telling me. Well. I'm doing a trip down memory lane. Maybe a walk over to the old high school is in order.